Ford was just about sick of GM owning the full-size three-row SUV market for the better part of 65 years, so in a fit of brilliance, engineers took the platform from an F-250 three-quarter ton pickup with the eight-foot bed and made a gigantic basically bus of an SUV out of it. Ford introduced the heavy-duty Class 2 three-row SUV in September of 1999 for the 2000 model year and would exist through the 2005 model year for a single generation with no major redesigns. For the 2006 model year, the Expedition EL would be the direct replacement for the truck. Sadly, this switch, while placing the Expedition at full-size class of the Suburban, lowered its capability from a Class 2 truck to the less capable half-ton F-150 platform. All excursions were built alongside the Super Duties at Ford's Kentucky Truck Plant in Louisville, Kentucky. The first excursion rolled off the line on September 30th, 1999, with the final excursion on September 30th, 2005. Available in several trims, from the fleet-only XL, XLS, XLT, Eddie Bauer, and Limited. Our review subject is a top-of-the-line limited trim that is painted in mineral gray metallic with the medium parchment leather interior. When new pricing is shown to the left and a full options list is shown in the description box below. Despite this vehicle being 17 years old with a 215,000 miles on the clock, this excursion is still going strong and remains in very nice shape. This excursion is a 2004 model year vehicle that is four-wheel drive featuring an electronic shift on the fly New Venture 273F transfer case. In addition, this vehicle also includes front manually locking worn wheel hubs with four-wheel drive and four-wheel drive low modes. The $100 transfer case skid plate and a 373 limited rear slip axle is a $250 option. And the excursion rides on an 8.1 inch ground clearance with a 25 degree approach angle 15.1 degree departure angle, and a ramp breakover angle of 7 degrees. Three engines were available for the excursion, including a gas Triton V8 engine, the Triton V10, and the diesel V8. Obviously, from the sound, our truck features the latter. Not the 7.3, but rather the 6 liter, 365 cubic inch, 32 valve, power stroke, turbo diesel V8 engine. This engine is of cast iron block and head construction, configured as an overhead valve pushrod, with four valves per cylinder, single variable vane geometry turbocharger, and an 18 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 325 horsepower, 3,300 RPM, 560 pound-feet of torque at 2,000 RPM. And I don't have any performance figures for this truck, but here's what really matters. The excursion has a curb weight of 7,688 pounds, with a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,200 pounds. The excursion has a total payload capacity of 1,243 pounds and a towing capacity of a massive 11,000 pounds. All this in a three-row, eight-passenger SUV with enough room for everyone and their luggage, in the camper, and the boat, and so on and so forth. All excursions are equipped with a massive 44 U.S. gallon fuel tank, and while no EPA fuel ratings are available, I estimate this truck consumes 5.7 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of a rather optimistic 792 miles. Fuel economy estimates are 15 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway, and 18 miles per gallon combined. While V8 and V10 gas-powered vehicles were equipped with 4-speed automatics, this diesel-powered truck was equipped with the heavy-duty 5-speed 5R110W torque shift automatic with overdrive and tow haul modes. Sadly, no manual transmission was ever offered. Sharing the same platform as the F-250 three-quarter ton pickup, it's no doubt that the excursion was pretty similar to those vehicles. The leaf springs in the rear were specific to the excursion, as were the wider and taller rear frame section. The rear axle is a sterling 10.5 unit with 373 gear ratios. 
Rear styling from a glance almost looks like it came from the Econoline van line. The tail lights are similar in appearance, however that is where the similarity is really in. The rear of the excursion sits on a very high 39.2 foot load floor height and is equipped with a class 4 trailer hitch with, which helps eliminate underwriting and rear end collisions by smaller vehicles and bumper mounted ultrasonic parking sensors. The focal point of the rear of the excursion is a tri-panel door system with upper flipper glass opening and Dutch door style split swing tailgate doors, as Ford calls it. This setup actually enables convenient full access to the rear compartment without the need to disconnect the trailer to do so. Along the profile there is no denying that the excursion is a massive beast of a vehicle. The full size rear doors hint at this largeness. Wanting to beat the Suburban at its own game, Ford made sure it was longer, taller, and wider than the competition. Sitting on a 137.1 inch wheelbase, the excursion has an overall length of 226.7 inches, which is 7.2 inches longer than the Suburban. It also is 3.3 inches wider and 5.8 inches taller than the Suburban. Steering is a hydraulically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate recirculating ball with four turns lock to lock and a massive 50.4 foot turning circle. The wheels are the 16 inch limited polished aluminum wheels with LT26575 R16 BF Goodrich all terrain TA tires front and rear. Brakes are hydraulically assisted four wheel disc brakes assisted by four channel ABS. Up front, the excursion is equipped with independent twin I beam suspension system with a Dana 50 front axle. To help eliminate the issue of overriding due to its size, Ford installed blocker beams under the front bumper to alleviate the vehicle from driving up and over the windshield of smaller vehicles and head-on collisions. The excursion features clear lens crystalline style headlamps lifted straight from the Super Duty trucks. They are automatic halogen headlamps with incandescent turn indicators. This would be the last year of the egg crate style grille as Ford would replace it in 2005 for the tri-bar grille to fall in line with the rest of the Super Duty line. Underneath that massive grille lies two small rectangular clear lens fog lamps and the cord sticking out is for the power for the engine block heater. In addition, there are two large tow recovery hooks as well. All right, and before we get inside, let's take a quick look at the key fob. Pretty basic Ford key fob. You have your lock, unlock, panic, and just a standard Ford key. Nothing really special here. No smart key access system. However, we do have core, uh, Ford's keypad entry system here. By entering your personal digit, four digit pin number, you can remotely lock and unlock the vehicle doors without the key. So we're gonna go ahead and get on the side. All right, and here we go inside the Ford Excursion. As you can see, pretty nicely equipped. And I got leather bucket seats. You got door trim detail here. All of it is pretty much hard plastic though. You do have some wood here harvested from the plastic forest. It is a two-tone interior, so you do have the uh, prairie tan and medium prairie tan colors here. And of course, plethora of power controls. You have power mirrors, power windows with auto one-touch driver down feature window lockouts, and of course, power locks. Located down here, you have two driver memory for the power seats, and on the doors, you have two level storage. Speaker grill housings here. And on the dashboard, we have headlamp control, fog lamp control, auto lamp, and instrument panel dim. Down here in the footwell, we have our hood release here, parking brake, parking brake release and we've also got power adjustable pedals they're on this button here on the steering on the dashboard and the power adjustable pedals also save with the memory feature you've also got a leather wrap tilt steering wheel and as far as seat controls go heated seat control here then we just have the forward part of the seat up and down the back part of the seat up and down then you have your four-way adjust here fore and aft all up and all down lumbar support here and seat back control here speaking of the seats very comfortable captain chairs 
They are leather wrapped and they do feature the limited script embroidered in the seat back. This vehicle has over 200,000 miles on it. So somewhere is to be ex expected and this is no exception here in the seat. This is a high wear area here. And, the, and this is the only blemish in the interior so far I've found, so that's pretty good. All right, let's hop inside. All right, inside, as you can see, nice fluid, hydraulically assisted power assisted steering on a typical four truck steering wheel, just a two spoke steering wheel. You do have your cruise control as well as your audio controls over here. And you have your climate controls on this side. Pretty nice. Multifunction switch here is your turn indicators, flash to pass, high beams, wiper washer controls. And of course you have your shift lever over here. And front and center you have a full set of instrumentation with oil pressure here, fuel gauge, 100 mile per hour speedometer, 5000 RPM tack, transmission temperature in the upper right hand corner, and your coolant temperature at the lower left hand corner. As you can see down here by the readout, if you can't see it, it's 215,114 miles. All right, panning over the top of the dash, it's actually held up well over time. Even though it's hard plastic, it does not have any cracks or breaks in it. It's pretty smooth all the way across. You do have some indentions here for the storage. And of course you have a passenger airbag. Large glove box, which we'll show here in a minute. All right, center controls here, four wheel drive controls, rear window defroster, your parking sense power switch. Down below is your adjustable pedals, small amount of storage here. You have an aftermarket audio system with a um, touchscreen display, DVD receiver, all that kind of stuff. You'll see as it pops up. Not really big into aftermarket, so. That's basically it there. It does feature Bluetooth and DVD and USB. And you've also got an automatic temperature control here. Single zone climate. Pretty easy to operate. AC, uh, recirculate, defroster, fan speed, your blend, auto mode, off, and of course to show exterior temperature. Underneath the air vent and the excursion logo is a 12 volt power point hiding behind that door. Nice fold out cup holders here. 12 volt power point, trailer brake control, and you do have a tire filler gauge here. All right, and this vehicle does feature the large captain chair, so we have a nice big center console with dual cup holders. More wood harvested from the plastic forest with a little paper clip here, really handy. Opening this up reveals an insane amount of storage. And of course, each seat has its own individual armrest as well. The inside of the excursion is like a small bus. It's very, very long, very large, lots of passenger accommodations. Overhead, we do have an automatic dimming rear view mirror. All right, and then we overhead, we have overhead compass here, compass display, and as well as our trip computer, 464 miles to empty. Turn it off. It's averaging 11.8 miles per gallon, which is actually pretty good considering. You have your auxiliary controls here for rear air conditioning, rear power vent window controls, and then overhead, sunglasses storage, garage door opener storage, and then you have some reading lights. All right, on this driver's side sun visor, you have three channel home link universal garage door opener. And I'm gonna demonstrate the sun visor over on the, pa on the driver's side because on the passenger side, it is actually uh, broken. Nice large padded visors, illuminated vanity mirrors. And as you can see here, the, the visors do slide out or swing out, but they do not slide, but they do have auxiliary Sun visors, love that feature.
All right, as is to be expected, this vehicle does have three rows of seating. So let's take a look at that third row first. Gaining access to the third row is actually very easy, simply by lifting the seat bottom cushion first. And then you can either fold the seat down like this, or you can tip and slide it forward. That gains easier access to the uh, rear seat. And taking a look at the third row, as you can see, it's just a plain Jane bench seat, vinyl covered, central lap belt, outboard three-point belts, overhead lighting. Another nice feature is rear seat passengers also have their own cup holders back here. And they also have integrated storage inside the armrest padding. You can see also back here is a spare tire. All right, now let's take a look at the second row seat. And this vehicle is just a second row bench seat, as you can see here. Show some of the door panel first. It's very basic on the back seat area. It's still very hard plastics, plastic wood, two-tone, semi-padded trim door release and of course you have your uh, window switch here speaker grill some carpeting here but no storage in the door pockets as you can see all right and this is a 60 40 split folding bench seat it does seat three across it is also reclining for this portion and the bigger portion high adjustable head restraints on the outboard seats as well as the height adjustable three-point belts the center seat just gets a basic lap belt Seat is very nice and wide. Does have a nice large fold down center armrest here. And of course, overhead, you do have overhead assist handles, coat hooks, air vents, reading lights. All right, and let's take a look overhead because we have a lot overhead. This does have the rear entertainment system. Starting over here on the left hand side, we do have our rear climate controls. So we have fan speed controls here, temperature controls, as well as our panel distribution from panel to floor. You've also got a fold down, small little DVD receiver player here, a little small little screen. And then over here you have your controls. So you have your VGA here. And then of course you have all your menu buttons and you can dim and brighten the display screen and all that kind of stuff. And taking a look down here on the floor, Behind the console, you have some storage here, two cup holders, and down here you have a 12 volt power point, and you have rear audio controls with headphone jacks. There's only two headphone jacks, and the seat backs on both sides have mat pockets.
All right, and the rear does have a rear opening lift gate and do two Dutch doors. All right, and here we go with them opened up. As you can see, they open up nice and wide. Pretty easy opening to the rear area. Tons of storage space back here too, being a full size SUV. You've got a lot of cargo capacity back here. Even with your full size spare tire back here, you still have a lot of storage capacity. You got four tie down hooks in the uh, floor, a 12 volt power point, and this little trim panel here is your jack stowage, as, we're, as well as a rear blower motor assembly. And the third row seat does fold. You can actually fold it by lifting this lever here and the seat back locks in place. And if you wanna lift it up, lift up on this handle here on the floor, it unlocks from the floor and it lifts straight up. And you can also actually lift it out of the floor completely. It has roller wheels on it. It's a very heavy assembly. It's about 45 pounds though. But here you can see even more storage space with that seat. And if you do remove the seat and fold the second row seats, you have even more storage capacity. All righty, that does conclude our in-depth walk around. Look at this 2004 Ford Excursion Limited. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram page at BrinsoJ1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.